Welcome back to the Bentonville Beacon Podcast. I'm your host, James Bell, and in this first season of the podcast, we're diving headfirst into Bentonville's outdoor recreation industry. And I'm thrilled to have in the uh, studio today, Bonnie Adams, the founder and CEO of the Joys of Swimming and Swim Oz. Joy, welcome to my pool. <laughs> I, I liked the pun of dive right in. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Excellent. Well, we'll take you to the easy end of the pool for the start off with. How about if you tell us about Bonnie Adams? What should we know about you? Sure. I actually grew up here in Bentonville. Um, I am a, a lifelong Hogs fan and went to the University of Arkansas. A fun little fact, um, swimming related as well, is I was a part of the very first Bentonville High School State Championship swimming team. Very nice. Way back when, feels like yesterday. Um, and went to the University of Arkansas on a swimming scholarship, started teaching uh, swim lessons and coaching uh, when I was still in high school. And kind of the rest is, is history, which we'll jump into later. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, you're being very modest. I made myself some notes on some <laughs> other things you've done or are doing. So if I look down at my notes, I just want to make sure I'm getting them right. Uh, it says here in my notes, you are a top 10 nationally ranked swimmer in five events, an Arkansas master's record holder. Can't wait to hear about that. <laughs> uh, you mentioned uh, swimming for the, the Razorbacks and you're a U.S. master's uh, level two coach. Mm hmm. How awesome is it to be paid for what you love doing? <laughs> it's amazing. Uh, I, some some days I I do have to pinch myself and and can't believe that that I do get to do my my chosen profession and and field and it is something that that most people get to pay me to to participate in and I I get to do it on, on a regular. So <laughs> yeah, that's wonderful. I'd love to hear about some of these uh, rankings and, and these meets. And- <laughs> All these amazing uh, accolades you have here. Sure, um, I'll I'll touch on a few of them, and feel free to ask me for for some more details if you'd like. Um, most recently, I I participated in the U.S. Masters National Short Course Meet that was held down in San Antonio, Texas. Uh, just a couple weeks ago, actually, at the end of April, and uh, was able to swim five events. And uh, 18th was my lowest ranked swim. Um, and then 12th was the next. And then I got 10th in the 100 back, a fifth in the 200 back, and fourth in the 50 back. So um, backstroke is my is my specialty. In case you couldn't pick that up with 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 that list, um, but really an amazing piece to be able to get back to competing, um, especially after the last few uh, challenging years that that we all have had. And so it was it was a lot of fun to be a part of that. But previous to that, um, I've I've ranked in the top ten, which basically means that. Um, they pool all the times together over all the swims and my swims have been in the, the top 10, um, fifth, fifth and a third. So yeah. That's yeah. impressive. Okay. Thank you. 18th is your lowest <laughs> at this meet. How many, uh, swimmers are we talking about? There were over 1500 swimmers. Oh my gosh. Um, now this was, um, I'm listing you my ranking and my age group, which does help, um, lift those numbers a little bit, but there were probably around, 45, I would say, um, that, that participated that had national cuts and, and could participate in the meet. So that's, that's very impressive. What's a short course? Oh, great question. A 25 yard pool. So I'll educate our listeners and viewers a little bit. So most people think an Olympic size pool, right? Um, that technically is a 50 meter pool by 25 yards. Mm -hmm. There are very few of those. A lot of your places, a lot of your gyms will say, oh, we have an Olympic size pool. Well, it's probably a 25 yard pool. Um, and that's what this particular nationals was, was a 25 yard pool. Um, and technically it was a 25 yard by 50 meter pool. So we had 20 lanes of competition going on all at one time. Um, which was pretty cool. They even live streamed the event itself, which was amazing for folks at home and, and that sort of thing as well. Very cool. I think I uh, might know part of this next, uh, the answer to the next question already. What's your favorite uh, <laughs> race or event? Backstroke, definitely. Um, I, I grew up as a hundred yard backstroker. That was my specialty. Um, it's funny as you're 
a young swimmer, you do 25s and 50s, which is one or two lengths of the pool. Um, and then as you get older, high school, um, the 50s kind of disappear except for the 50 free. And uh, you do more 100 distances, 200. And then, of course, your, your greater distances, your more endurance athletes and that sort of thing. And as you get older, though, those 50s start reappearing, which was a lot of fun. And that um, I found a fondness and definitely a love for that 50 backstroke this this time around. I look forward to doing it again. <laughs> That's great. Uh, my, my long distance across the pool is your typical, uh, I, I remember back in the day, you know, the, the cheap apartments with the small pool, three yes. strokes and you're all the way across yes. it, probably takes you one and a half. Um, what other sports are you into? Well, I mean, we are in Bentonville. I do love to do cycling pretty much of, of all sorts. I um, am actually a level one BICP instructor. Um, I'm also a NICA instructor as well. Um, so I, I don't really do much with that other than um, I, I don't know, uh, knowledge is power. And the more you learn, the more you know, the easier some things are. Yeah. Um, and then I also do um, a lot with Women of Oz, um, was a founding member of, of that organization as well. And so um, doing some of their uh, fundamental clinics and, and that sort of thing, um, love to participate in those. And then also um, have raced cyclocross a little bit nice. and I, I hesitate using the word race uh, participated and stayed on my bike is more apt to what I actually did a um, lot of fun learned a ton um, again it's that that learning is power piece and then um, I enjoy road cycling as well uh, just competed in my first Ironman and so had to do 56 miles on the road so um, yeah yeah and then I run a little but not a lot <laughs> I'll, I'll stick to the the water sports thank you <laughs> <laughs> i understand that's probably a reason i need to do water sports is because i used to run a lot uh <laughs> but my knees don't tolerate that anymore so swimming would probably do me some good yes it would um we did talk about that iron man band uh, yeah, on your, your arm i'm, I, you I'm a little proud of it and i i probably won't take it off for another week or two just because i'm one and done this is this is a one-time gig and i am okay with that <laughs> Uh, very nice. Uh, let's talk about your business. Uh, what can you tell us about Swim Oz? Yeah. So Swim Oz got started a little over a year ago and is kind of a sister, daughter, what have you to the joys of swimming. And the joys of swimming is a swim school that I founded um, probably close to 10 years ago now. Uh, looking to provide the best instructional um, program uh, available anywhere. And uh, so we specialize in private lessons. Um, mm -hmm. And we I still teach a lot of private lessons. And there's a lot to be said for group lessons uh, for for swimming. And um, it's a wonderful thing to, to be able to, to learn to swim. It's a life skill. I firmly believe that everyone should know how to swim. And my definition of swimming and your definition of swimming might be two different things. Probably. And really trying to educate everyone, honestly, on some water safety stuff, as well as being able to just swim across your backyard pool isn't really swimming and and what that really means and can afford you to to do and be able to participate um further in life as well as keep you safe and uh through through the joys of swimming i started building my clientele personally with a lot of athletes adult athletes triathlon athletes Ironman athletes um, and world-class championship athletes. And the thing that I noticed the most of for, for that particular subset was there really wasn't a guided safe area for them to go to the lake and, and practice those open water mm -hmm. swims. And uh, fall of 2019, sat down with a friend of mine who um, encouraged me to put together some open water swim practices. We were going to do um, April and May in 2020 and call them Wetsuit Wednesdays and do them out at Beaver Lake. 
and things were going um, quite swimmingly, if you will. And then, uh, of course, 2020 hit and February hit hard uh, slash March. But it made perfect sense for us to go ahead and do our open water swims. And so sure. we did. And at that particular time, a lot of the pools were closing. Um, my, my little independent pool was one of them. Yet we were still able to go out to the lake and do open water swims. And the numbers started to build a little bit, which was really exciting. Um, fast forward to the end of May, pools still really weren't opening up. So we decided to go ahead and continue throughout the summer. Uh, it really doesn't get cold here until you know mid-October. Mm -hmm. So thought, okay, well, let's do it for six months. So we do April through the end of September. Um, lake Temp is fantastic um, in that, that all through the month of September, really. And it was great. People loved it. I loved it. Thoroughly enjoyed it. It was something that gave everyone something to look forward to, as well as prepare my clients, as well as other clients that were, or not clients, excuse me, other swimmers that were looking to have um, some, some group activity in open water, in the lake, and it be in a safe environment. Um, one of the tricks about open water swimming is you've got to worry about a lot of traffic. And um, the more we have doing it together, the more visible we are. Um, it's a lot easier for the boats, one, to see us, and two, to avoid us. Um, they don't even come near us now. They know Wednesday nights we're out there swimming, which is great. But um, finished up that season and was like, okay, this was great. It was a lot of fun. There's clearly a need for it. What what can we do for this? What what's the next step for this open water swim stuff? And through the course of the joys of swimming, you know, we have you know, three hundred plus clients, and it's the majority of them are you know three four year old learning to swim. Mm -hmm. The parent of that looking at Instagram or, or our social media feeds sees a bunch of middle-aged folks out at the lake. They're going, yeah, this isn't the swim school for me. So definitely there needed to be a, a delineation of the two. And uh, kind of through the course of November, December of 21, or excuse me, of 2020, looking at what what can this be called? What can we what can we do? Um, being involved with Women of Oz, uh, the Oz Trails, we are in the land of Oz, and it just made sense to go with Swim Oz, and looking to really bring that outdoor recognition that Oz does. Um, seemed to be a good a good fit and had some discussions with some folks and we made it happen. So 2021 Swim Oz was born. That's fantastic. Um, man, so much there to unpack. Uh, I'm just going <laughs> to go to my next question yeah. because I, I think you've got a, a race of some sort, an open swim race of some sort coming up. We do. Uh, can you tell us about that? I can. So the Walmart Oz Mile Swim is our race that we um, are super excited to, to, to bring to the area. And we are going, well, the event, the date is uh, Sunday, September 25th. It's the last weekend of September. Uh, festivities begin on that Friday with a um, kind of a packet pickup, meet and greet. We've got some elite swimmers coming in from all over the U.S. and really excited to have that opportunity not only to showcase our great area, but also for our local swimmers to, you know, kind of come and rub elbows with some of the big wigs yeah. in the swimming world and looking to really grow this event to be the largest freshwater open water race in the U.S. So very excited about that. Oh, that's neat. So I'll be counting on you to recruit some of these swimmers to just move here. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, you know, if, if they're like other folks, about 2% of the ones that visit will just send for their things or go get their things and uh, come back and stay permanently. Um, gosh, open water swim sounds uh, pretty intimidating <laughs> to me. Um, <laughs> I'm wondering, how does one prepare for open water swim and, um, you know, tell me about the aspect of your business that helps people get into it if they've never done it. Absolutely. So we, we have a couple of different ways to kind of prepare yourself for it because it's, it's a completely different animal. It yeah. really, it really truly is. You know, you think about, 
oh, well, I go to the lake with my boat or I can float the river or, you know, all these other aspects of being outside and being in, in a, an open body of water, which is, again, going to be your lakes and, and rivers and oceans. Um, but what you're not thinking about or what a lot of folks um, come across as obstacles or challenges are the pieces that there's not a wall, right? Mm -hmm. You're not in a 25 yard pool or a, even a 50 meter pool. You've got a vast distance between you and the, the next thing that's going to hold you up. And um, so that can be pretty intimidating. There's, there's things that, that I lay out for our swimmers that really helps mitigate that intimidation. So we've got um, a couple of things. One, we do a swim Oz conversation. Uh, we've done one on the differences straight up from pool swimming versus open water swimming and what that, what that looks like, mm -hmm. what you can do to enjoy your first time out at the lake to join us with some of our open water swims. And basically it's working on your sighting and that's exactly what it sounds like. You're sighting something, you're looking for something. And so when we do our open water swims, we have large buoys that we use. There are these big giant seven foot, bright orange triangular cone shaped things. Sure. And I mean, you think, okay, well that's pretty easy to see. Well, when they're, you know, 300 yards away from you and they're a little trickier to see. And so one of the things that I'll do with my clients is I'll make them sight me. So they're at one end of the pool and their job is to lay eyes on me two or three different times throughout the course of that 25 yards. I move around a little. I'm not always in that same spot. And the reason for that is when you're swimming in a pool, you've got a black line to follow. Mm -hmm. It's real easy to swim in a straight line. You take that black line away, uh, you take away those lane lines, you take away the clarity of the water, and it's a challenge. And so you've got to rely on the orange buoy or me floating around, moving around and, and that sort of thing. And so just by the act of practicing that is a big piece. And really the big part of that is we just want you to lay eyes on the object. You don't have to come up, take a whole breath. It's just taking a peek is what I, I tell my clients. We just want you to lay eyes on it. And that helps a lot. So um, that's one of the things along with a few other things. Nice. Um, you know, I have to confess, swimming has never really been part of my regimen. <laughs> um, there was a, a time in my life when I was super fit. I was down to 6% body fat. And I couldn't float. Uh, in fact, I failed the Navy swim test three times because I couldn't float. <laughs> I, I, I forget what the test was. Maybe we step, you know, step, uh, stepped off of a 30-foot uh, platform, mm -hmm. bobbed up, swam, I don't know, 25 yards, something like that. And then we had to float for five minutes. I think first we had to tread water for five minutes and then float for five minutes, neither of which <laughs> I uh, could do. Uh, but now I have a lot more padding. So um, fluff floats. Yeah, fluff, yes. Fluff floats, right? <laughs> so maybe it's time for me to uh, start swimming. Come and take, for a visit. Take care yeah. of my needs. Right. You know, uh, it, it's interesting that you talk about floating and um, treading water. Those are those are two very important skills to, to do. And since it is May, it's actually water safety month. Oh, cool. And that's something I didn't I didn't mention in, in our chats prior to this. But uh, one of the things that's kind of a misnomer is you think that floating, you should be able to just, you know, kind of lay there like a starfish, mm -hmm. right? And not move or do anything. And you should be able to float there. Well, that's not necessarily the case. And basically what you want to be able to do is move as little as possible. Not so much, not at all, but as little as possible. And so by doing as little as possible, you can hopefully do that for a very long time. Um, yell for help, that sort of thing. Um, I have I have my swimmers go through three, three questions and I'll share those with you briefly. Sure. One, um, should, do we walk or run around the pool? Of course, we want we want our kids to say walk. Um, the other is, what should you do if you see someone in the water and they're having trouble? We want to go tell a grown up, um, mm -hmm. go tell a friend, go call nine one one, those kinds of things. And you know, it's interesting. My older kids that. Uh, I'll have the privilege of, of sharing um, water safety talks to. I go into schools and, and that sort of thing and, and, and do water safety presentations. But 
our older kids, you know, fourth, fifth, sixth grade, they're like, I'll go help them. I know how to swim. It's like, well, then we've got two people in trouble in the water sure. and no one knows that you're there. And even, even at, you know, the city pool with lifeguards, you know, lifeguards don't just jump in quietly and get you. They blow whistles. They are telling someone else that there's trouble in the water. So that's their way of, of alerting um, their, you know, cohorts and, and whatnot. So um, we always want to go tell someone, let someone else know that there's a challenge. Um, the other is what you should do if you're the one in the water having trouble, and that's lay on your back, not necessarily float, but lay on your back and yell for help. So just that having your face exposed is really all that we need. Um, and again, doing as little as possible. So and don't fight some, the rescuer. Don't fight. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you want to be kicked away. That's right. That's right. <laughs> I did learn something. Or, or drug under. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, you know, I don't, I don't look very uh, in shape today, but as I said, I used to be super fit. And one of the things that I found out uh, or, or what I learned along the way was sort of cross training uh, and strength training uh, helped even with running. That mm -hmm. sounds strange, but helped uh, even with running uh, and, and other things that I was doing and um, just doing different sports other than what I was doing would help my performance. Absolutely. Um, to what extent does that apply to swimming? And then how does swimming uh, apply back the other way? For oh, other I'm, I really like this. So um, it's 100% uh, on all of it. Um, it's one thing to condition your body for swimming or mm -hmm. for running to your point. Um, you know, we've got a, a ton of cyclists in the area. And so cycling, you know, oh, I just need to go ride my bike. Well, Yes, we want you to ride your bike. We want you to swim. We want you to run. But we want you to do other disciplines as well. And I'm, I'm going to share a little personal. Um, so a couple of pieces. When growing up, I started um, strength training when I was just 12 years old. Wow. And it wasn't all about lifting heavy weights or, or anything of that sort. As a swimmer, we call it dry land. Um, <laughs> that's just, you know, what we, what we call it. And the, the aspect of it was to lengthen your muscles, to engage your muscles differently. Um, you know, you hear a lot about the, um, high intensity workouts and that sort of mm -hmm. thing, muscle confusion, um, that goes in to cross training in a big, big way. And what it allows you to do, it allows your body to do is still build up that, um, those muscles and that sort of thing, as well as getting, getting yourself to experience it in a different way. It's going to break down the muscle a little bit differently. It's going to build up your muscle a little bit differently. It's going to allow you to have a, um, kind of, um, cross, cross benefit that you're only going to get when you're doing something else as well. And that, that piece is huge. It's huge. And then, so take, you know, as a young age, now let's fast forward, um, a handful of decades and, you know, I'm in my mid forties now and started this swimming thing mm -hmm. again, um, coached and, and taught all of my life, all my adult life, but have just gotten back into competing again myself. And what I've noticed is areas that, um, if I just repeat, I, if I just do this flutter kick, if I just do that forward pedal, if I just do that forward motion for running, I'm using the exact same muscles over and over and over. Well, guess what happens then? You get injured. And so I've had to do um, a fair amount of physical therapy. I've gotten some dry needling done, which I cannot recommend highly enough. Um, that's maybe a whole nother topic for you. Um, but basically, it's reminding your body to work the other muscles, and that allows you to become more efficient. It become it allows you to become faster, stronger, all of those things so that instead of getting fourth in the 50 back, you'll hopefully get first next go around. Nice. That's the goal. <laughs> but that cross training is a huge part of it. Um, and lung capacity, um, cardio wise, it just, I could go on and on about the, the benefits of it. But a lot of, a lot of my athletes that, that I work with on a swimming standpoint will, um, 
be like, oh my gosh, this is helping my run. This is helping my cycling so much so. And they're just kind of blown away by it. I'm like, yeah, I could have told you that a long time ago. <laughs> nice. Um, you mentioned dry needling. I, I would I would like to talk about dry needling sometime. Maybe, <laughs> maybe that'll help me uh, get rid of uh, some of my uh, chronic pains. Uh, I, it probably would. It's that a fantastic and, thing. Yeah, that and losing 20 pounds, 30. <laughs> Stuff like that. So, well, let's come back to uh, the other sports you enjoyed. You mentioned uh, mountain biking, the outdoors. Um, what's it like not only getting paid for the thing you love, but living here in Bentonville and Northwest Arkansas and having the opportunity to do pretty much anything you want to do outdoors? Wow. I, I can't describe how amazing Northwest Arkansas is enough. Uh, growing up here, it was amazing, um, but it has changed dramatically. Um, I mean, think about back in the early 90s, where Bentonville was a population of 10,000. Mm -hmm. You know, we had, you know, three or four stoplights. And then I moved away in the late 90s and, and came back about seven years ago and had the opportunity to live in a couple different places in Florida and a couple different places in North Carolina, both of which I, I loved immensely, but knew at some point we would end up coming back here. And, you know, I would, I will take North Carolina, for instance, I would, um, get in the water and, and swim on my downtime. I was the aquatic instructor for Duke University for about five years. And I would, I'd be the fastest one in the pool. And that was okay and, and mostly expected. And I came here and I was one of eight people swimming. And the other seven I was swimming with were former division one swimmers as well. Impressive. <laughs> It was astounding. I went from being the big fish in the little pond to being the small fish in the ocean again. And there's so much of that that translates into what Northwest Arkansas is from not just a swimming standpoint, but from a recreational standpoint, from a business standpoint. I mean, we've got you know, Walmart and Tyson and JB Hunt and it, the, the, the names keep growing and growing and growing. And the caliber of person that lives here, that is moving here to mm -hmm. your point earlier is astounding. I mean, we have pro athletes that are moving here to train here because it is such an amazing place to be. And that lends itself to having the ability to kind of look around and take notice and get creative with how you earn your money mm -hmm. and, you know, it, being able to, to start things like swim Oz and it be something that I can do as a, as a complete job, not just a part of a job, sure. but a, a complete piece. Yeah. There's a lot of that going on around here. People, <laughs> I, I've noticed a lot of people move here to be the next best version of themselves. Yeah. But they also come here and seem to have that mindset of, I want to help build this place I'm in because that is part of being the next best version of yourself. And uh, that's one of the things that drew me here and, and my family. Uh, and I get to see it every day as I'm recruiting business leaders and, and workers. And it's just nothing short of astounding to see so many people that feel that way. Yeah. Um, what advice would you give uh, somebody who hasn't ever visited Bentonville or Northwest Arkansas? Do it. What are you waiting for? <laughs> it's a great place to come and visit, to experience. Um, we're pretty mild in our season, so it's a good escape from wherever you might be. And there is so much beauty here. Uh, of course, from a recreational standpoint, just the, the heart of the Ozarks are just uh, speechless. They're just awesome. They're absolutely awesome. And to, to be able to come and, and see all of that, I mean, we have, I, I don't know, three or four major rivers within, you know, 45 minutes mm -hmm. of us. Um, we've got, of course, the mountain biking trails, you know, hundreds and hundreds of miles. I where I live, I'm, you know, maybe 500 yards from the nearest trail system. And that's, 
normal, <laughs> which right. is unreal. Um, the the culinary industry um, is is amazing and is something that I still haven't experienced, even though I've lived here for seven years. I, there's still places on my to do list of I can't believe I haven't eaten there yet, and and those kinds of things. The art is just equally as incredible and it's just a great place to come and visit and experience but you know don't tell too many people <laughs> right <laughs> we like it here <laughs> all right since you brought up some uh that there are places you haven't been yet let's play a quick game of confessions Ooh. see i didn't tell you this was going to happen it just made me think of this my two confessions are are um i have yet to have been to the hive and I have not visited the Museum of Native American History. Oh, that's a must. Yeah, and both of those need to happen yeah, yesterday. Yeah, I would agree with that. I would agree with that. And are so much fun. And you've got small kids. Yeah, we have a uh, 23-month-old. He's yes. our only one. Yes, okay, you're, it's, you'll, you'll see the museum through his eyes, which will be really cool. So it's a neat, it's a neat space. And I probably should go again. It's been a few years. That's cool. All right, now you have to name two. Oh, I have to name one. two things? Um, oh goodness gracious. So from a culinary perspective, um, I think there's probably a few places that I've been to, but need to go back because I'm, um, very frugal with my dollars. And so like, we'll go and, and just do the appetizers and then we'll go home and have dinner. Uh -huh. <laughs> Um, but preacher son, I, I definitely need to go back again. Uh, plus it's, we've got a new chef there, so I need to, need to go experience that one. And I would like to probably do some of the, just the downtown scene more, um, do, you know, kind of my, on our own progressive dinner, if you will, and, and kind of bar hop and, and appetizer hop, if you will. <laughs> yeah, you bet. Well, um, there will be some new ones coming online over the next few months. Understand that the uh, new Peloton building that's being built will have a couple of uh, interesting restaurants in it, some interesting retail. Uh, and so there should be some other really cool uh, stuff coming. Um, you know, this place, uh, Bentonville in Northwest Arkansas, it really just seems like full of uh, endless possibilities. Um, how does a business leader capitalize on what's happening here? Or how does, uh, how should somebody be thinking about it if they're not present here in this community right now? How should they be thinking about their business's present, uh, presence here? I think that there's several different ways to, to go about that. Um, from a boots on the ground, if you will, if you've got a presence here, um, there are so many opportunities for networking. And when I first started going to some of the, some of the chamber events, um, as well as some, some of the other networking events, you know, we've got startup junkie, they do, um, a great job with some networking, um, events as well as, um, some other pieces, there's 1 million cups and, and some of those. And I think that, you know, I, I remember when I first started going to One Million Cups and my husband was like, why are you, wh why are you going to some coffee thing listening to other business people talk about their things? Like, how is that benefiting your swimming lessons? I'm like, oh, honey. <laughs> and, and it was so much fun to, to share that experience and educate um, not only my husband, but uh, friends and, and other folks on what is going on here and where you can, one, learn about what is going on mm -hmm. and how you can help support some of those local um, startup businesses and, and that piece of things. But I think if you're, you're not here and you don't have that physical presence yet that, uh, you know, do some of that research, right? Find out what is going on. What are some of the events that are happening? You know, the momentary has all kinds of great, um, activities and events and their calendar is getting fuller by the day. I feel like mm -hmm. I'd opened my email to some new event that's happening and, you know, the, um, Crystal Bridges has their, uh, I forget what it's called. I think it's like the forest um, concert series that'll be yeah. starting up soon. And so looking forward to that. And, but how can, how can your business get involved in some of 
those events. Um, you know, we've got the Walmart Oz Mile Swim that's happening that's the right. end of September. And, you know, there are a whole lot of other opportunities to showcase what you might have as as a business owner, as a um, new business or or established business outside of here that's looking to to break into the Northwest Arkansas um, area. You know, the, the Ozark Outdoor Foundation um, is on the backside of a, a lot of these opportunities for families to be out there. You know, they're they're behind my swim. Mm-hmm. Um, they're behind the Oz Kids Crit series, um, which is a, a cycling criterium that's happening. Um, we've got one coming up actually in Fayetteville this weekend. Um, there'll be another one um, in Bentonville in October, and things like that 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 get your business in front of potential um, clients is is just a great a great way to to grow and and then it truly experience what Northwest Arkansas has to offer. Yeah, you bet. I, I feel like this place, um, like Bentonville and Northwest Arkansas, have this sort of really interesting combination of um, of opportunities for businesses. If you're B two B, we've got something for you. If you're B two C, we've got something for you. You know, if you're B two B, you've got Fortune One, but you also have two other Fortune five hundred companies who are right next door to us. Uh, you have fourteen hundred vendors to Walmart across the region two counties um then you know on top of that we're actually not that unusual compared to other cities in terms of a mix of businesses mm-hmm. um north of 98 percent of our businesses employ less than 100 people that's true across the country and you know those are the businesses that uh across the whole country are growing the uh are growing jobs um and so uh, you think about those, and you've got all these opportunities um, to uh, do business on a B2B uh, scale. And even if you think about the vendors, these may not be, uh, you know, these could be offices of a couple of executives or several hundred people, depending on who the company is. Uh, but more than likely, that is the number one or number two business unit in that company because they're selling to Fortune One and we're buying <laughs> from Fortune One. Then on the other side of the picture, you have the B2C uh, picture, you know, we live in a place where, uh, you know, there's a lot of corporate workers uh, and uh, these workers want access to amenities. Uh, and so there's all kinds of opportunity to create things uh, in that space, but they also have high disposable income. They're, they have uh, high salaries and below average costs. Uh, and so they've got plenty of money to spend. And then you've got visitors who are coming to do arts and culture and go to Crystal Bridges and the momentary and so on. You have um, folks who are coming to do mountain biking, which turns out is not a, uh, a very low cost uh, sport in the scheme of things, or it can no. be a not very low <laughs> cost sport. Uh, and so you, it just seems to have all the pieces for uh, both sides of the picture, doesn't it? It really does. It really does. Um, tell me a story. And uh, tell me a story that is, uh, call it a hashtag because Bentonville story, something that could only happen here, or even if it's just a snapshot of a moment. For example, mine would be uh, the first time I ever saw a bike detour sign. (laughs) <laughs> was in Bentonville. That would be because Bentonville for sure. Um, I'll I'll share a story. Uh, this is uh, part of part of what Swim Oz does. We have a masters team, which mm-hmm. is our eighteen and over, and then we we do our weekly open water swims Wednesday nights, six p.m. Highway Twelve boat ramp. It's a real fancy address, but it gets the job done, and we get to to go out and play in the lake every Wednesday, April through September, which is fantastic. But that crossroads, right? Our our masters team um, only practices at the Walton Life Fitness Center, so that that kind mm-hmm. of excludes a handful of folks, which is fine. I not a problem. Um, but I had the opportunity to have one of um, one of our swimmers. His his name is Liam, and he um, he has Down syndrome, and he is on our masters team. Wow. And great kid, 
Um, I actually took a selfie with him this morning um, for a, a separate reason, but um, he is a great swimmer and had been missing the 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 competitive aspect of swimming for a while, um, just because we all had been. And his mom signed him up um, to to participate with our master's program and. Through the course of, of chatting with him and, and his mom and, and getting to know them and kind of his a little bit of his story, I was like, you know, he's he swims the 500-yard freestyle for his Special Olympics Games, and he could totally come out and swim the mile. Like we, we did a kind of a test run event last year to see if the Oz mile would, would work and, and whatnot. And, um, it was about maybe two weeks before that race. And I, you know, started chatting with, with him and he was like, I want to do that. I'm like, okay, well, let me chat with your mom. I'll give her the info and, um, had a conversation with her and it was now fast forward three or four days. We're now the week of the event. And she's like, Liam wants to race in the event. Is that like, can, can, is, is that going to be okay? Is that a thing that we can do? I'm like, Oh yeah, we can totally do that. Let's bring him out to our Wednesday night swim. And, and first of all, see how he does in the lake, <laughs> because remember it's very different lake swimming versus pool swimming. And we, um, he came out and had a great time and it was hard. It was challenging. I think it was maybe more challenging for mom sitting on the shore than it was Mm -hmm. for Liam in the water, but he was, he loved it and was encouraged by the other swimmers that were there. And the piece of having a challenge set forth in front of him and him going, yeah, I want to do that. I want to give that a try. And he did. And he was super successful and came out to the race some four days later and got started and kind of had a moment. He was like, why am I not up there with all the rest of the swimmers? Because we started in waves as opposed Mm -hmm. to one big mass start. And so he was towards the back and was, you know, somewhat challenged by that. And uh, my husband had a a little um, motorized boat and picked up his dad and went out and they talked to him for a little bit and talked him into to continuing on. And he did and he finished and he's like, okay, when's the next one? And he's ready for more. And he'll actually be starting. I think they're going to come out this this week um to to start swimming again and it's moments like that that where where different parts can intersect and can expose you to seeing something for the first time in a different way Mm -hmm. that you kind of forget about I feel like unless you're in this area and there are probably another half a dozen stories at least that are similar to that where somebody is like "Mm, that's mm, that's out my comfort zone no thank you but it's through the course of continuing conversations that they decide that okay I'll give it a try and then decide they love it and are are happy to do it and want to come back for more and that's an exciting thing that is that is a beautiful story (laughs) um is what can the community do to help you be successful with swim oz Mm. and with the uh walmart um, or oz Oz mile Mile. Yeah. yeah um a handful of things i think there are opportunities let's say you know you mentioned that that Swimming might not be your your cup of tea just just yet. I'll keep asking, um, but just yet. And there are opportunities for you to still be involved. So mm-hmm. we have kayak support, and nice. basically, I'm looking for volunteers to come out and just quite literally be another body on the water. So you got to think about um, the lake, right? It's big, vast openness, and we've got our swimmers that are submerged all you really see is their head um i do require a safety buoy so we do have have that and those are brightly colored which is great um and they act as kind of a flotation device um they'll they'll hold anybody up and so there's there's that piece of it but if we're sitting on kayaks or standing on stand-up paddle boards we're much taller and bigger Mm. than our swimmers that are in the water and so the more kayakers the more stand-up paddle boarders that i have out there during our swims the the safer we all are because of that so there are those ways to be involved um 
sharing, you know, some of our social media stuff in regards to just our Wednesday night swims, our weekly swims. And then of course the event itself. And we've got, um, a live band, the juice is going to be playing for us, um, yeah. on race day. And we've got, um, barbecue from McLeod's, um, over in Pinnacle. And, uh, we've got beer that will be, um, flowing and just a really, really truly a festival atmosphere for this race and that's something that um in years past or other open water swims that i've been to that hasn't really been the case it's been a show up do your swim which is great and amazing but you might turn the corner and so you can't really see but 100 or 200 yards and you know we're swimming 1600 yards so it's it's like okay well you saw 30 seconds two or three minutes maybe mm -hmm. of a 30 minute to 45 minute swim um where we where we do our swim it's out at the dam site and so it's we do a triangle course and so you get to see as a spectator the entire swim which is great and there are opportunities to be involved kayak wise uh, for that as well as you know just helping out with registration and and some of those pieces um for for any land lovers that are out there that want to see what this craziness is all about yeah that sounds great i mean you had me at music barbecue and beer <laughs> we've got right. something for everybody <laughs> right well i am a certified barbecue judge oh i forgot that we had a mclard's here now i have not been to mclard's yet and now that seems like it's going to be on my list for next weekend if if i can get my wife to let me go there you go <laughs> um how can people reach you and swim off so Social media is our best spot to really see what's going on here and now and maybe what we did yesterday or the day before and what we're about to do. Um, we do have a website. There's the joys of mm -hmm. slash swim Oz. We also have a website dedicated to the race, ozmilesswim.com. And that's probably the easiest one to remember, ozmilesswim.com. Mm-hmm. <laughs> make sure I get to that one. Yeah. Uh, so what should I have asked you that I didn't? Oh, wow. There was something that I was thinking of earlier on in our conversations. And I think, um, it was really more along the, the crossroads of, okay, I know how to swim. I want to come be a part of swimming in the lake mm -hmm. or, um, kind of, tailing on to how, how do I make that <laughs> jump, if you will, um, from pool swimming to, to open water swimming. And there's, um, really just ask questions, ask questions, let either, if you've got a coach, awesome. If you don't have a coach, give me a holler, happy to, um, chat with you on the phone for a little bit. Um, we've got new folks that come out and join us every week. And last summer was really, really cool. So we, at our largest swim we had 42 participants that came out um on one of our wednesday night swims and all throughout the summer we had at least one new swimmer each and every week and that was like that was a cool thing for me to know that it the word was getting out and folks were still interested and there's there's opportunity there for for swimmers, for professional athletes, for professional triathletes. Um, you know, we've got a gal that lives on in Fayetteville that joins us. Um, she is a professional Ironman and is a, a, an amazing um, part of the community. She works at the University of Arkansas. And she came up and did um, a, a little talk series with a, a youth triathlon team that I co help coach, uh, Team 180, and got to share a little bit of her triathlon story and, and that sort of thing. We also had a, a few Olympians that, that came out and, and spoke, and we had one Olympian that came out and swam with us last year. And um, So you never know who's going to be in the lake with you um, or in the pool for that matter. But there's there's some really neat neat pieces of it in in that regard, and then also um, I touched very briefly on a swim Oz conversation, mm -hmm. and it was funny that you mentioned um, talking about cross training and some strength training and conditioning and some of those kinds of things and, and benefits. And we've done a couple of, of conversations. Our our last conversation was on cross training, oh, nice. and our next conversation next Monday is on strength training. <laughs> 
So we'll be doing one on nutrition um, at, at some point. And then I've done a couple of little minis on visualization and, and some things like that, which are um, super, super beneficial for, for any walk of life, period. So there's some fun things there to unpack. Outstanding. <laughs> All right. Last question. You were unprepared for this one. So forgive me. That's okay. No, this one's this one's a fun question. Okay. So if you had a superpower and that superpower came with limitation, what would that superpower be? And I'll give you an example while you're thinking about it. My superpower would be that if I'm watching a sporting event and I really wanted to be at that game, I could pick up my remote, press a button, and Teleport. it transports me. Yeah, that's <laughs> nice. right. It teleports me into the game. However, the limitation. The limitation would be that uh, somebody else would be teleported into the game, not of my choosing, and that person would absolutely hate sports and be bitter about it the whole time, and I'd have to listen to them the whole time while I'm trying to enjoy the game. <laughs> okay, the limitation is going to be the harder part, right? Um, I mean, that would be to be a mermaid. I mean, come on. Right. Um, yeah. Not having to, to surface for, for oxygen would be a great superpower. <laughs> so, um, but the limitation there, I don't know what that would be. Maybe, maybe it would only be in open water. So, okay. um, yeah, there we go. <laughs> right. You know, as I think about mine, I feel like I've described a curse instead of a limitation. <laughs> Your sounds so much better. <laughs> Not too bad for thinking on my fins, shall we say. Oh, very nice. <laughs> very nice. Well, let's get back on shore here. Uh, <laughs> thank you uh, for spending time with me and, and with our audience. I really appreciate it. This has Absolutely. been fun. I, well, it's, it's been an absolute joy and um, was really excited to kind of share our, a little bit of what our story is and, and how we make a little bit of a space in the recreational fields and in Northwest Arkansas. So thanks for having me. You bet. Thank you. Well, hey, I hope you got as much out of that as I did. Mm -hmm. uh, that was really wonderful uh, hearing uh, Bonnie's story and about Swim Oz. And if you'd love to hear more of this, uh, these sort of conversations and hear more about Bentonville's business leaders and their businesses and about Bentonville in Northwest Arkansas, where you can have more of what you want, less of what you don't, hit that subscribe button on your favorite podcast player and uh, come back and visit us again. And in the meantime, uh, check out BentonvilleEconomicDevelopment.com for more episodes and to learn more about Bentonville. Have a great week. <laughs>